Good evening, everybody. Good to see you tonight. It's now 6.30 and 54 seconds. Time to get our Wednesday night service underway. Hope everybody's doing well. Hope you've had a great week so far. Hope you come expecting a blessing tonight. And if you're watching by social media, we're glad you tuned in to us tonight at 10 Mile Baptist Church in Perkinston, Mississippi. Take your hymnals. Turn to number 148. Let's stand. Let's sing this great old hymn, number 148. Turn back to number 33. Another great old song, and we'll take up our usual Wednesday night offering for the youth fun on this on this hymn. Number 33.
Brother Colby, we'll pray for us this evening. Dear God, thank you, Lord, for allowing us to gather in this place again tonight, Lord. Lord, I'm thankful for all the many blessings you've given me, Lord, in my life, Lord. Lord, I'm thankful for the honor and the privilege, Lord, to be able to still come into this place. Lord, it's something that I don't take lightly, God. I'm thankful, God, that I have a place where I can gather among the saints of God, Lord, and just, and Lord, we can lean on one another, Lord, and help and lead. And Lord, I pray, God, that we'll keep you in the midst of our, in our eyesight, God, and Lord, that we'll look to you for guidance, Lord, and wisdom. Lord, the Bible says, if any man lacketh wisdom, he asks it to you, God. And I pray that, Lord, you'll give me wisdom as I continue to lead and guide my people, Lord. And I pray for each and every soul represented here tonight, God. I pray, Lord, that you'll speak to hearts tonight, God. I pray you'll use the man of God in a special way, Lord. I pray for this offering. I pray you'll use it to uh, further our use. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Amen. Thank you, brother. All right, Brother Austin's coming with his announcements. I only have just the one, and that's uh, to remind our seniors. Uh, on the 4th, November 4th, at Max on the River, and we'll be uh, leaving here at 4 o'clock in the bus. If you want to meet us there, we'll be there at 5 o'clock. So put that on your calendar. Hope to see everybody there. Brother Austin. Well, good evening. Good to see you out this evening. Um, one of the things I forgot to mention Sunday night uh, was thank you for praying for us as we went to the uh, Baptist Friends meeting up in Tennessee. That was a great blessing to us. The uh, entire meeting was centered around prayer, and so we were thankful to be able to be there. Um, all the men that preached, like I said, preached on prayer. And the Lord's been working on my heart about that subject ever since we had our revival here with Brother uh, Mark Green, and uh, so it's amazing how the Lord works those things out in your life. But um, we had a, it was a great trip, great blessing to us. So thank you for praying for us, and hopefully um, we'll be able to go again next year. Uh, do continue to pray for Brother Clarence Sexton. He's the pastor there at that church, and uh, he's a, that's the same church we go to Youth Congress every year. He's still in a rehab facility working. Uh, physical therapy, trying to get use of his body again. I I was able to uh, find out that he had, we heard that he was supposed to be going in for some bariatric treatments for his body. He's had, I think, 12 reconstructive surgeries on his spine and uh, just kind of wanted to try to get some more use out of some of his body. He's in constant pain is what I understand. And uh, when they did that bariatric treatment, some infection spread in his body. And so they were trying to get that under control. And then when they got that under control, he lost some use of some of his, um, the rest of his body. So just be in prayer for him as he's going through that physical therapy. Great, uh, great man of God, great pastor of that church. He, they've, they've got a great pastor like we have a great pastor. And uh, just like if Brother Tim were gone for months on end, it's affected their church. And so be in prayer for them as they pray for their pastor. Uh, I do have a couple or uh, missions letters to read to you. And uh, the first one I want to start with is Brother Gary Crisp. We do not support him. I believe he's been through here. Um, but he says here, Dear friends and supporters, as the summer months begin to wind down, uh, we continue to be as busy as ever. Between missions, conferences, revivals, and youth camps, we've been honored to see the Lord do some big things. We've been all over North Carolina, Tennessee, Mississippi, Louisiana, Virginia, and Georgia. 
In July, we got to see at least six young people call on the Lord and be saved in youth camps that we had the privilege of doing. In August, we had the opportunity to preach a prison revival in which four men were saved. Then in September, uh, I just finished a revival in which there were two people saved. I'm glad God is still in the saving business. Uh, we also just finished our annual Prayer Baptist Missions Mission School, which was hosted by uh, Wayside Baptist Church in Hillsboro, North Carolina. In spite of several last-minute changes, the Lord blessed greatly. Several of, our, several of our missionary families got to be a part of it, and we trust they were encouraged in doing so. We have just booked our tickets for our trip to Scotland and England in October. We look forward to visiting with and encouraging several missionary families that will be attending a meeting in Scotland uh, that we will be assisting in. Uh, I'll be posting this along with our other uh, missions letters. And then we have another one from uh, Brother Daniel Robertson, Light and Lamp Distribution. He says, I write this letter to you with great excitement as I prepare for my trip to Scotland. I said he wrote it. He may have wrote, written it, but knowing Brother Daniel, uh, I bet Sister Renee wrote it. But anyway, uh, I write this letter to you with great excitement as I prepare for my trip to Scotland. This will be my first trip out of the country. I'm very eager to see what all the Lord has in store. I appreciate all those who pray for me and my family and ask that you specifically pray for this trip. Pray for my wife as she will be home caring for our children and without me and pray that the Lord's will is accomplished on this trip. Pray for Brother Cody Teague and his family as he will be traveling with me. I'm very thankful to have a friend traveling with me who has some experience in international travel. We were recently able to send some Bibles to Kenya and Mexico. Please pray that the individuals who receive these Bibles will be converted uh, if they aren't already, or that they will be edified by the scriptures. It is a blessing to get to provide Bibles to those who need them, and we want to thank you for your support that makes this possible. We could not distribute Bibles without the partnership of God's people. We would like you all to know that we are thankful for your help. We would like to update you all on our daughter, Ellery, and thank you all for the prayers for her. She is responding well to her medication, has had a de decrease in the amount of seizures that she's having, uh, when a seizure does occur, it is usually very minor, and she seems to recover relatively quickly. We are thankful that the seizures have caused no major damage to her brain up to this point, and ask that you pray for that to continue. We recently had some friends and family gift her with a new seat and swing that are designed to aid her in sitting up and her development. We are very thankful for these gifts, as they have already been such a help to her. Her next appointment with her doctor will be at the end of October, and will consist of more genetic testing to find out if there are any other conditions that she may have besides the epilepsy. Uh, she will also begin physical therapy in the month of October. Please pray that she responds well to therapy, that the testing reveals all that we need to know of her condition. We will update you all on her condition in our next prayer letter. Thank you all for your continued prayers and support. We are humbled and thankful for all you do for us in our partnership. May the Lord reward you all perfectly. God bless. That's Brother Daniel. One more that I'll read is from someone else that we, we do not support. But um, he makes mention of Maya Missions. That's Brother Stanley Kilgore. He's actually my advisor in Bible college. And uh, so we're very thankful one of Brother Tim's friends um, as well. So uh, the, the ministry that he is a part of right now is 4G Ministries. And he says, the months of September and October have been very busy for me. One of my brothers had Whipple surgery because of his pancre pancreatic cancer. I was concerned that his surgery might cause me to cancel my trip to Belize to teach in the Maya pastor school. His surgery went very well, and I am grateful for the prayers of God's people. Brother Margarito Ballone, the pastor of Anchor Baptist Church, had asked me to preach his missions conference in October this year. That's down in Belize. And he said, so I made two trips to Belize just a couple of weeks apart. Listed below are the results of both of those trips. In September, I had the privilege of teaching in the Maya Pastor School for 30... I had the, past, the privilege teaching in the Maya Pastor School for 33 years. It's always the main focus of what I desire to do in Belize. 
I usually spend several hours a day teaching and then go out at night and preach in the village churches. I taught more on this particular trip than I usually do, so that hindered me from going out at night to preach. But I was able to make the three-hour trip to one of the villages on Wednesday night. The church was full, and I really enjoyed seeing the people again. Pastor Thomas and his wife have 12 children and 31 grandchildren. In 2019, I prepared a detailed study on the theology of typology with plans of teaching it in 2020. But COVID changed all of that. When the country opened back up, there were other subjects that needed to be dealt with. Since I had so much time to teach this year, the topic of typology was a perfect fit. The pastors really enjoyed the series and did very good on the exams I gave them after each session. In October, he says, three days before leaving for release, I had a severe reaction uh, with my pancreas from the double flu shot I received. The acute pancreatitis attack happened two years ago when I was on my Ozempic shot, and I was taken off of that shot for my diabetes. I've had no problem since then. My doctor believes the double dose of the flu vaccine is what caused it to flare up again. I told him I could not cancel my October trip to Belize. Instead of sending me to the hospital, they treated me at his office with a few bags of IV fluids. He prayed over me and sent me on my way. The Lord really touched my body, and I flew to Belize that Thursday. The focus of the October trip was the annual Faith Promise Missions Conference at Anchor Baptist Church. The church made the decision to move the missions conference from the December date to the month of October. The leaders of the church were very concerned that it might hinder their attendance, but the church was packed every night. The missions conference was very well planned, uh, and it had a great host of volunteers. The music was very lively, and the members were very energetic. The members of Anchor Baptist Church love the preaching of God's Word, so it's always a joy to preach there. I will allow the church to post the total amount of their missions offering, but I will say it was a great increase over last year's offering. Thank you so much for your prayers and support. Uh, working together for his kingdom, Brother Stan. Uh, and then I have the letter that I read last time from Brother uh, Tinga. I, I get them by way of email, and then it takes them a while to get here physically because he's mailing them from so far away. Uh, so that letter, it's not late. It's just he emailed it first and then mailed it. Uh, and it took a while to get here. So I'll post that in the back. A um, couple of announcements. One, coming up next month and December, we will not be having our adult fellowships. We're going to cancel those uh, because of the busy holiday season. So we'll not be doing that in November or December. We will start back in January. Now, I'm, I'm going to say something that's going to sound like I might... Be, being ugly, but I'm trying. I really, I'm not trying to be ugly. Um, but something in our adult fellowships is going to have to change, and I hope that we see a great increase in January. If not, something something's going to have to change because we've been having very diminished attendance in that. Um, so please make plans to attend in January. That'll be the the uh, I think it's the first Saturday we do them, or is it the second second Saturday? We do them the second Saturday. So the second Saturday of January, please make plans to be a part of our adult fellowship. And then also uh, tonight, I'll be needing some help down in the, I say I'll be needing some help. Sister Josie will be needing some help down in the gym. because She's the boss. She will be the one that's bossing everybody tonight. And so she'll need some help down in the gymnasium and in the, um, well, Life Center Fellowship Hall dining room, whatever you want to call it. And so uh, if we could get some help down there, that would be greatly appreciated. If you're not in the choir. If you're in the choir, you need to be in the choir law after service. Um, and don't forget... Yes, sir. That's was my last thing. Um, don't forget, Saturday here at 2 o'clock, we'll be honoring Brother Tim uh, for his 50th preaching anniversary. And I think that's all of my announcements. I do want to thank you for Sunday night. It was a great blessing to me and Sister Josie. And uh, we are very thankful to be here serving. Um, that's my heart, by the way. I want to serve uh, here. And uh, you make it easier because you're such a blessing to us. And I'm thankful for that. So thank you for all that you, you gave to us. 
and um, we we can't thank you enough for it. Uh, I think that's all of my announcements, Brother Tim. Cole, we give that baby to your wife. Come make ready to read. I want you to make sure you open your Bibles tonight. <clears throat> I have Brother Colby read Isaiah 55 and 56. I want you to make sure you read along with him, particularly chapter 55. <clears throat> Isaiah gives some great instruction <clears throat> in these two chapters, particularly chapter 55. I want you to pay it to not but 25 verses in the two chapters, but I want you to listen to what it says. Let it speak to your heart tonight as Brother Colby reads <clears throat> 55 and 56. Brother Colby. Isaiah chapter 55, Ho, everyone that thirsteth, come ye to the water, and he that hath no money, come ye, buy and eat, yea, come buy wine and milk without money and without price. Wherefore do ye spend money for that which is not bread, and your labor for that which is satisfieth not? Hearken diligently unto me, and eat ye, and eat ye that which is good, and let your soul delight itself in fatness. Incline your ear, and come unto me. Hear, and your soul shall live. And I will make an everlasting covenant with you, even that, even the sure mercies of David. Behold, I have given him for a witness to the people, a leader and commander to the people. Behold, thou shalt call a nation that thou knowest not, and nations that know, knew not thee shall run unto thee because of the Lord thy God, and for the Holy One of the Israel. For he hath glorified thee, Seek ye the Lord while he may be found. Call ye upon him while he is near. Let the wicked forsake his way, and the unrighteous man his thoughts. And let him return unto the Lord, and he will have mercy unto him. And to our God, for he will abundantly pardon. For my thoughts are not your thoughts, neither are your ways my ways, saith the Lord. For as the heavens are higher than the earth, so are my ways higher than your ways. And my thoughts than your thoughts. For as the rain cometh down, and the snow from heaven, and returneth not, not thither, but watereth the earth, and maketh it bring forth a bud, that it may give seed to the sour, and bread to the eater, so shall my word be that goeth forth out of, thy, out of my mouth, it shall not return unto me void, but it shall accomplish that which I please, and it shall prosper in the things whereinto I sent it. For ye shall go out with joy, and be led forth with peace. The mountains and the hills shall break forth before you into singing, and all the trees of the field shall clap their hands. Instead of the thorns shall come up, up the fir tree, and instead of the briar shall come up the, the myrtle tree, and it shall be to the Lord for a name, for an everlasting sign that shall not be cut off. Chapter 56. Thus saith the Lord, Keep your judgment and do justice, for my salvation is near to come my righteousness to be revealed. Blessed is the man that doeth this, and the son of the man that layeth hold on to it, that keepeth the Sabbath from the polluting it, and keepeth his hand from doing any evil. Neither let, thy, let, neither let the son of the stranger that has joined himself to the Lord speak, saying, The Lord hath utterly separated me from his people. Neither let the, <clears throat> the Enoch say, Behold, I am a dry tree. For thus saith the Lord unto the Enoch's that, that keep my Sabbath and choose the things that please me and take hold of my covenant. Even unto them will I give in mine house and within my walls a place and a name better than the sons of a daughter. Mm -hmm. I will give them an everlasting name that shall not be cut off. Also the sons of stranger that join themselves to the Lord to serve him and to love the name of the Lord to be his servants. Every one that keepeth the Sabbath from polluting it, and taketh hold of my covenant. Even them will I bring into to my holy mountain, 
and make them joyful in my house of prayer. Their burnt offerings and their sacrifices shall be accepted unto mine altar. For mine house shall be called a house of prayer for all people. The Lord God which gathereth the outcasts of Israel saith, Yet will I gather others to him beside those that are gathered unto him. All ye beasts of the field come to devour, yea, all ye beasts in the forest. His watchmen are, are blind, they are all ignorant, they are all dumb dogs, they cannot bark, sleeping, lying down, loving to slumber. Yea, they are greedy dogs which can never have enough. And they are, they are shepherds that cannot understand. They all look to their own way, every one for his gain from his quarter. Come ye, say they, I will fetch wine, and we will fill ourselves with strong drink, and tomorrow shall be as this day, and much more abundant. <clears throat> I challenge you to spend some time in those two chapters. They are chock full of great instruction. I'm just going to point out, pay close attention to verse 1, 2, and 3, chapter 55. You ought to highlight, underline, notice verse 8 and 9 in chapter 55. And then I challenge you to watch what God says in chapter 56 about the Sabbath. Now, we don't observe the Sabbath because it's not a special day unto Him. That's what the Sabbath was. It was a special day unto the Lord. Thank God that we meet on the day of the resurrection on Sunday, first day of the week. Day of starting over. That day ought to be held in great reverence. Just stop and ask yourself as you read through that, how do I treat Sunday? What's my perspective of Sunday? Just another day of the week. It's different because I go to church. If that's your perspective, you're looking at it wrong. You're looking at it wrong. I'm going to take time to pray for Israel tonight. I know they're still in the process of making preparation for the ground invasion into Gaza. Somebody said, I thought they were going to do that several days ago. I, I believe they're trying to give a little grace to the hostages that are being held. Uh, by the way, there is... Uh, you know that one of the things that they claim is in short supply is fuel. Independent sources have confirmed that Hamas is and has been for quite some time stockpiling the fuel in preparation for this day. The common people are not getting it, but the terrorists have it. Uh, so I did Encourage you to be careful uh, about letting your sympathies run too deep uh, for the Palestinians. There are some innocents in there, but as I told you Sunday, they are well indoctrinated. And uh, if they fly under the Muslim flag, look at me, they hate us. They hate God. They hate anybody that does not reverence and worship Allah. And uh, so be careful about what you buy into in the news media. Uh, that uh, what Israel wants to do needs to be done. I did read an article today that... Uh, our president is still standing with Israel, but he's one of those that believes there needs to be a two-state settlement. And what that means is, is that Israel, he, he agrees with Israel giving up part of their land for the Palestinians to have their own state. 
uh, that will work. Why? Because God said it wouldn't. God said that land's theirs. Uh, I read another article that uh, and it surprised me somewhat. It was actually a former military leader in one of the Arab countries that <clears throat> said what what needs to happen is is we Arabs need to grant them land so they can have their own state. So that shocked me that that come from one because most of the heads of state in the Arab countries don't want them. But this one said we need to grant them land. That's a workable solution. That's a workable means of them having their own state. But understand this, they're still going to have the terrorists, and the terrorists want to be among the people that they hate. So the solution to it is dismantle. And uh, just like God told Saul in the Old Testament, utterly destroy them. You can take issue with that if you want to, but I'm just telling you what God said. When you got an enemy, hello? God knows how to fix it. So that don't mean if you've got an enemy in the church, you've got a right to go shoot him. We're to fix our differences. Amen. And I had to say that because I didn't want Miss Sandra shooting me. We're going to come and pray. And then we're going to look a little bit in the book of Acts tonight. Find your way. If you're able, find your way here to pray tonight. Remember, Sister Helen, she's not feeling well tonight. Brenda is got a all clear on her heart test today. She's still having problems keeping her oxygen level up. They're not sure about what, what, what's going on there, but they said all of that would look good. Brother Steve Kennedy went in today to have some kidney stones removed, and they couldn't find them. Uh, they were there yesterday, uh, but today when they went in to retrieve them, uh, they were missing. Uh, they were went MIA. <laughs> but uh, pray for Brother Steve. But Sonny, good to see him back tonight. Amen. Feeling a little better. As you continue to pray for him. Brother Dale, how about you starting us off tonight? Brother Cecil. And then Brother James, you close us out, please.
Acts chapter number 9. <clears throat> You'll have to tolerate my voice tonight. It's been coming and going all day today. As I was listening to Brother James pray, he talked about that great free gift that we have that's available to all men. Lord, run thought across my mind. <laughs> How we'll labor for something that we want, but yet God offers a free gift and men refuse it. Actually, a TV program that I watch crossed my mind. It's called Alone. They, the premise of the program is they take ten people out and put them on a remote place where they have to they have to fend for themselves. They have to find their own food. There's they get to take very few items with them. They have to build their own shelter. Uh, there's one of the one of the series of it that. They had the potential, the person that stayed the longest would win a million dollars. I had never really thought about it until Brother James was talking about that free gift. And I thought about, um, I've watched them, and they go out there, and man, they, they nearly starve to death. It's an amazing thing. In, in quest of a million dollars, but yet God offers a gift greater than that. And it's called eternal life, salvation, heaven. <laughs> and we refuse it. People refuse it. Acts chapter number 9. We've been looking at, uh, last week we looked at Barnabas. Verse 27 talks about him. Saul came to Jerusalem. He desired to fellowship with the disciples and the believers there, but naturally understanding they were all afraid of him. They were doubtful that he had gotten saved and had in fact been preaching the gospel over in Damascus. That verse 27 says, But Barnabas took him, brought him to the apostles, and declared unto them how he had seen the Lord in the way. Talking about earlier in Acts chapter 9 where Saul had that personal encounter with the Lord Jesus. Uh, by the way, that qualified him to be the last of the apostles, uh, the apostle Paul. That was a requirement to be an, an apostle was that you had to have a face-to-face -face call uh, with the Lord Jesus. And Saul was the last one that that's recorded in Scripture that that happened to. And how he had preached boldly at Damascus, Jesus, and disputed against the Grecians, but they went about to slay him. The religious crowd, again, is getting upset because this this one of their loyal soldiers has something drastic has happened to him. I wrote under that verse, I said he went from the hunter to the hunted. He went from the hunter to the hunted. He's fixing to go from the persecutor to the persecuted. Now, we saw that the Lord told him that he was going to have the privilege to do that. So, man... That ain't much of a privilege. Well, depends on how you look at it, whether it is or not. The Bible says this, that which when the brethren knew, they brought him down to Caesarea and sent him forth to Tarsus. Now that's his home. That's where he, that's where he was originally from. Folks stood up for him. There was some... Apparently that time, we don't know how long a time frame this is, or at least I don't, and and he's, he's beginning to be accepted among the brethren, the religious crowd, 
uh, gets upset at him in, in, in Jerusalem. Uh, and the Bible says that there were some that knew that they were wanting to slay him, that being Saul. I, I wrote also in this, if you watch the progression, it went Stephen. And when Stephen was stoned, Philip stepped up and become the man, and now Saul is the man. God's always got a man. Thank God for that. Amen. I'm, I'm thankful that God's always got a man. I'm glad He's always got somebody to witness for Him. I'm, I'm glad God designed it that way. They sent Him to Caesarea and sent Him forth to Tarsus. And then, and then the Bible makes an interesting statement in verses 31. In verse 31, then had the churches rest throughout all Judea and Galilee and Samaria. That's that Jerusalem area. And were edified, walking in the fear of the Lord and in the comfort of the Holy Ghost and were multiplied. You ought to, you ought to underline verse 31 and go back and look at it and pray on it and meditate it a while because there's some great, principles that ought to be present. Listen to me. Look, Give me eyes. It needs to be present in Ten Mile Baptist Church. There's some things that's taking place. And what the rest is talking about don't mean they were sitting around twiddling their thumbs. It means the persecution eased for a little while. One of the reasons the persecution eased for a little while was because the chief persecutor <laughs> had gotten saved. That always helped a church find rest. Amen? Most troublemakers in churches, what they need is a good old Holy Ghost dose of salvation. If you have a tendency to want to stir up trouble in the church, probably a pretty good indication you need to get saved. It might bring rest to the church. Amen. Notice, notice what else that verse says concerning that church. The Bible says this, they were edified. That means they were built up. They were growing spiritually. They were, if you will, they were attending. They were sitting under the preaching and the teaching of the Word of God. And the people were growing spiritual. They were getting built up. They were getting stronger. And they, they were going to need to be. God knew that. I'm afraid sometimes we miss opportunities to, to get stronger. And then when the difficulty comes, we're not ready for the difficulty. The, the degree to which we are edified are built up, are made stronger, is determined by ourselves. I was talking with someone today and they were sharing with me some difficulties, some areas that they were struggling. And I, I, I tried to encourage them to spend more time in their Bible. It's, it's, not, it's not difficult to discern when you listen to people how much time they're spending in the Word of God. That's your food source. That Bible. Just as surely as you sit down at the table before you came to church tonight or after church tonight or whenever you do it, it's just as important that you sit down with the Word of God because that is your that that's what the spiritual man feeds on. That's his that's his source to get stronger. That's his source to be edified. The Holy Ghost of God that lives inside of you. That spiritual man that was birthed in you when you got born again. There was another man birthed inside of you when you got born again, and that's a spiritual man. Amen. Adam killed him with sin. 
way back in the garden. But God made it possible, amen, through the second birth, that that, that that spiritual man that's inside of you, amen, that God places in us, not just in the person, He places the person, the Holy Ghost in us, but may I say to you, God built us with, a, with an inclination to know Him. He made man that way. They were edified. Churches were built up. They got stronger. They got prepared for things that were yet to come. Amen. Ten mile. I don't know what's coming ahead. I, I but I, I do know this. There's a strong probability we're gonna have the opportunity to see how much we really love God. Now we're not going through the tribulation. Not one second of it. And don't you even go out and say that I even implied that. Because I know better than that. God hadn't saved me to wrath. He saved me from it. But who knows what lies ahead for us in the days and the weeks and the months that's coming. There's been a lot of there's been a lot of interesting things that's went on in Israel for years, but there ain't never been nothing that quite fits the scenario we're seeing right now. You better take advantage of the time you got to get strong. Amen. Because there may come a day when you need it. It may not even be related to Israel. It could be something that happens in your family. Now we'll notice the next phrase. And walking in the fear of the Lord. First thought that come to my mind. Remember Ananias and Sapphire way back over earlier in the book of Acts? And they, they chose the light of the Holy Ghost. I wonder how many I wonder how many of us would still be breathing, sitting in this building tonight. If you, right now God struck every one of us down that's ever lied to the Holy Ghost. We have no fear. We have no fear of God. Let me let me let me help us. Are you still with me? We'll come down to this altar and weep and bawl and cry and wet the altar with our tears and beg and bargain with God. God, if you just do this, I'll serve you. God, if you'll just do this for me, you won't have to worry about me. God, I'm with you the rest of the days of my life. Sometimes before the next Sunday rolls around. That's lying to the Holy Ghost. How many of us should be breathing? right now. Funeral homes would love it. Somebody from the outside walked in there and said, man, we walked in 10 miles. Everybody, everybody in there is dead. Well, God did that. I tell you what it did. It put some fear in some people's hearts. Now, there might be some that they'd wonder about, well, why did God kill them? But there's some in here that they know that there's a child of God. There's some folks in this church that walk right and do right. Some that pretend. Some that play games. There's some in here that do right. Walking in the fear of the Lord. We fear man. <laughs> All man can do is kill our body. Right? Am I right? I mean, that's the very worst they can do to us. Snuff out our physical life. That's the very worst. No man can send me to hell. A lot of folks will go to hell because of their fear of man. Some of you won't witness because you're a fear of man. 
walking in the fear of the Lord. I gotta hurry. And in the comfort of the Holy Ghost. <laughs> That's not even something I'd explain, but if you have experience, you know what it is. That's when it looks like the boat takes on one more wave, she's going to the bottom. And she takes on one more wave and she's still floating. <laughs> Amen. At them times when we don't know where the money to pay the financial situation that we get ourselves into, that God just because He loves us, make sure it's there. Man. That's when the doctors have exhausted and done everything they know to do. <laughs> they said, Well, we don't know no more today. Next time you go to the doctor, the doctor says, Ain't nothing wrong with you. Comfort of the Holy Ghost. Can I get personal? The doctor in one area says, We can't do that. You have to take chemo and radiation. God put you in another doctor's hands. He said, oh, that ain't no problem. I'm going to take care of that. Outside of that shot, you even had no chemo or radiation, had you? Your last report was what? Comfort of the Holy Ghost. Started work on Brother Jeff. The doctor got in there and said, I ain't touching that. God put him in the right place with the right man. I said, that ain't no problem. We can take care of that. Comfort of the Holy Ghost. I watched both of them. I know when it came. I watched both of them. I know when that comfort came to them. It was before they got all clear. Walking in the comfort of the Holy Ghost. And then watch this next one. And multiplied them. We don't need additions. The early church moved from additions. Early chapters of the book of Acts, and there was added, and there was added, and there was added. We're to the place now where it's being multiplied. Why is it being multiplied? Because they walked in the fear of the Lord. They got to that place to where their comfort was in the Holy Ghost. And they were pulling their feet on a regular, consistent basis up to the table of God. Give me your eyes just a moment. Some of you are anemic because the only food you get, you get it here. That's all you get. You never open your Bible at home. You never pray. Oh, you pray when you sit down to eat. Lord, bless this food. Thank you for it. You're anemic. You have no strength. Hard times come, you're going to be in trouble. You better learn to have you a steady diet of God's Word. Look, Kenna, has that book been a part of your daily life for how many years you know why he stayed faithful you know why he's made it through the hard times you had some hard times hadn't you brother you had some hard times you know why you know why he's strong you know why he's endured steady diet of that book you know why he's still around because he's trying to help us learn the need for a steady diet in this book. 
Well, you young, some of you young ones better stop, take notice. You think it's a game. You think it's a take it or leave it thing. You think it's when it's convenient, when it's easy, when I ain't got nothing else to do. Some of you may be watching me by social media tonight. You better stop and take notice. Bow our heads. Father, thank you tonight for, Lord, what you recorded in your word for us, for our benefit, to help us. Lord, help us tonight as we go home to meditate on that verse there. Think about what it said. But we need to get ourselves steady diet of the Word of God. But we need to walk in fear of you. God, we need to put ourselves in the place that regardless of the storm that's raging in our life, we know the comfort of the Holy Ghost. And then, Lord, we might begin to see some multiplication. We might begin to see some results. Thank you for loving us. Thank you for this crowd that's come out tonight. Bless choir practice, the work time down in the Life Center in preparation for Saturday.